This is Twit. We were talking before the break with Dan and Lewiston, Maine. He's got an iPhone 6, just won't make it through the day. You know, I, this is an unfortunate case with almost all smartphones is see my in my opinion a smartphone should you should be able to disconnect it at seven in the morning and it should go till you go back to bed at 11 at night if you sleep eight hours a day that's 16 hours and uh and with and the problem is of course everybody uses it differently but I, with fairly heavy use maybe three or four hours of the screen on you know that means i can use it for phone calls uh, wi-fi uh, and and so forth and there are very few smartphones that will do that right now. In fact, as far as I know, the only one that I know will do that is the um, rare OnePlus One, which got nine in my use got 19 to 20 hours, no matter what I did with it. Most other phones, you need to carefully cultivate juice, eliminate apps that, for instance, wake the phone up. Facebook is notorious for this. If you have, and most people do, the Facebook app. On your phone, the first thing to do is go in the settings on the Facebook app and say, stop checking Facebook, please. Like, turn the refresh interval to never. You might also want to turn off notifications. There are apps you can use uh, to see what's uh, eating all the juice. And, uh, you know, some of them are surprising. For instance, I have a Verizon phone, and Verizon, uh, obviously for you know, because they make some money on it, has, it, installs every Amazon app there is, and you can't remove them, including the Kindle app. Now, I, I use the Kindle app from time to time, but rarely. But for some reason, the Kindle app, no matter what, even if you've never launched it, which I haven't, is always checking things. Hey, you got any, got any books? Got any new books? Huh? 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 And waking up the phone and sucking down juice, even though I don't want it. So I always disable the Kindle app. Yeah, I know it's not ideal, because what if I wanted to use it? Well, I'd have to go in and re-enable it, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, so what, they're good things to, to kind of figure out what is using the juice, and you might be able to get it longer. But most phones, even with some reason, and by the way, I don't want to do that at all. I want to be able to have everything installed and use it as I wish and get it through the day. I just got, this is the new uh, Droid Turbo from Verizon, which has a giant battery. Uh, you, can, you, you can even, it's heavy and thick. You could tell it's got a giant battery in it, and it, it's given me pretty good life. Eh, not quite 16 hours, but it's given me pretty good life. So in many cases, you need an external battery. Or there are still a few phones you can pry the back off and put a second battery in. The, my favorite in this regard is the Note 4. The Galaxy Note 4 from Samsung has uh, a pretty hefty battery to begin with. You know, so it's kind of, I find it a little bit discouraging. They make these phones, like the Droid Turbo and the Note 4, that could, if they were using 1080p screens, go easily 20 hours. But then they say, well, we got a lot of juice. Let's put a giant high-res screen on here. And so it's a 20, what is it, 2560 by 1440 screen, five more than 500 dots per inch. You, can't, you don't need a screen that high resolution. And, of course, that kills the battery. If they made this Droid Turbo with a 1080p screen, it would look the same. I can promise you, you couldn't see the difference. And its battery life would probably be 50% better. Same thing with the Note 4. The difference is the Note 4, you can pry off the back, pop out the battery, put another one in. So I, in fact, I do this with any of buy us. Whenever I buy a, a Galaxy phone, I, I always buy a second battery. They're not expensive. And then you could just pop a new one in. Carry the battery around with you. You've got, you know, plenty of juice. The other way to do it on something like the iPhone where you can't do that, you can't take off the back, you can't put a new battery in, uh... Not, not every day anyway, uh, you buy an external case. And a lot of people use Mophie cases. Those are a good choice. The problem is the new iPhone is so slim and gorgeous and aesthetic. And then you put a honking big case on it. It's honking big because it's got a battery in it. Well, yeah, now I can go all day. But I might as well be carrying a brick in my pocket. The other choice is to have an external battery. And there's a big variety of those. Here's what I would look for. I'll give you some brand names in a second, the two brand names I use. Um, but I think they're all probably the same. They're all made in China, and then companies slap their label on them. A couple of things you're looking at, though, when you buy these batteries. One is how many milliamp hours it has. That's how much juice it will hold. And, of course, the more juice it'll hold, the bigger the battery. So you have to decide how much you need. It, it would only take 
between, say, 2,000 and 3,000 milliamp hours to recharge your iPhone 100%. So if something's got, for instance, 5,000 milliamp hours, that's enough juice to charge your iPhone twice. Probably enough, right? You, you know, if you, if you expect to get back home uh, in a day or two, that's probably enough. So that's one thing to look at and judge. You can get a smaller one if you're content with there. I've even seen some that, that you could use as a bookmark or put on your keychain, but those aren't going to give you a full charge because the battery's too small. So the easiest way to do that is look at your phone, see how many milliamp hours there is in the in the battery of the phone, and then you add a little bit for a slop, and that's how many recharges you're going to get. The iPhone 6 battery is, it's under 2,000, I think. Let me look uh, real quickly and see. Apple will tell me. I'm sure, won't they? How big is your battery? Probably the chat room is going to beat Apple to this one as I scroll down through the specs. I want to say, I want to say like 2,200 milliamp hours. That seems to be what I remember. So if you got one with 5,000, that'd be able to charge it twice. The other spec you're going to look at is the ports themselves and how many watts that port can push. And this is a, this is a good thing to know if you're you know you're starting to get thinking about battery life on a device. All USB devices, all USB chargers are five volts. End of story. That's the spec for USB. It's how many amps it pushes out, and of course the wattage is volts times amps. So an iPad, for instance, wants a 10 or 11 watt charger. That means you're going to have a 2.2 amp charger, 2.2 amp connector. So, and I think that that's probably the most anything needs. So you, 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 if you're going to charge an iPad or a high wattage device, you want to make sure you have a high amperage battery. Some of these newer ones are what they call smart ports, which can go anywhere between 1 amp to 2 amps. So... Okay, now I said I'd say brand names. There's two brand names I really like. My favorite is Anchor, A-N-K-E-R. Anchor makes, for instance, their, and this, I use this, the Astro 3. This thing is the size of a pack of cigarettes. It weighs a bit more because <laughs> it's a big battery. And, um, and this thing uh, has three smart ports, which can you can either do uh, four amps overall or four amps per port. And it's 12,000 milliamp hours. So that's going to give you five charges on your iPhone. Easy. So that's one. And I, li and I like that a lot. That's the And then the other one I like is the Jackery. And this is a, the Jackery is right now a little bit on sale, which is great. Um, the Jackery Giant Plus Premium Portable Charger. Also 12,000 milliamp hours, but 40 bucks instead of 45. And this has two ports, one that's a high, you know, a high speed or high amperage port and one a lower port for a phone. A lot of phones, like the iPhone 6, will charge faster if you put a higher wattage uh, charger into it. So it's good to have the uh, additional wattage. So there you can probably more than you ever wanted to know about external batteries. Anchor, Jackery, both good brand names. And then choose the battery size that will give you uh, the amount of juice you need multiplying uh, the amount of juice your bat your phone needs for a full charge or will hold for a full charge to get that a number 2200 amps 2 days 5000 leo laporte the tech guy